Welcome back to another episode of Running Through the A. This week, we're super excited. We're joined by our Razorbacks gymnastics coach, Coach Jordan Weber. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. So we just got the season started last week with a Mm -hmm. win over Nebraska. Um, But before we get into all that, we want to kind of go into you and your background and stuff like that. So when did you get into gymnastics? (laughs) <laughs> way back <laughs> in the background oh, back. I started gymnastics when I was four years old um and it's kind of a funny story I have no gymnasts in my family um actually all my family are like runners they all do marathons and um, all very athletic but anyway when I was like two three years old I had like bicep muscles and quad muscles that were kind of like unusually toned for a child <laughs> And my mom looked at me and said, well, she kind of already looks like a gymnast. Let's put her in and see if she likes it. And that's literally all there was to it. That's how I got into gymnastics. And I was four years old when I started and oh gosh, it was just kind of a whirlwind from there. (laughs) It's incredible. I thought that you're going to have like a bloodline of gymnasts in your family or something. You're just born a gymnast and that's it. Guess so. (laughs) (laughs) So fast forwarding a little bit. You made the 2012 um, Olympic team. How old were you then? I was 17. That's crazy. What was that just winning a gold medal and that experience like? Yeah, well, it was just, as you can imagine, a dream come true for me. I remember watching my first Olympics on TV when I was nine. It was the 2004 Olympics. And um, I watched Carly Patterson win the all around. And I I remember exactly where. I was, I remember sitting there saying, you know, I'm, I just want to be, I want to be just like them. I want to be an Olymp- Olympian someday. And so I always had that in the back of my mind as I was practicing 30 hours a week and giving up, you know, half a day of school to train twice a day and just kind of going through all the really difficult and intense training. I always had that goal in the back of my mind of that's the ultimate dream for every gymnast is being an Olympian and um, even better winning a gold medal. And so you know, finally getting to that point. I mean, for our Olympics, only five girls made the team. So think about all of the gymnasts in the whole country, five people get picked. So it was not an easy team to make, um, but, you know, was really blessed and and honored to be able to represent Team USA in the Olympics. And um, oh gosh, it was just so surreal. And then we went out there and, and did our thing and we, we beat every other country and won a gold medal and just, oh my gosh, standing on that medal podium. I was so proud of my teammates and just so honored to be able to have that experience. Yeah. And I might be wrong here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but so 17 and didn't you have a stress? Did I read this wrong that you had a stress fracture too? Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. So yeah. Um, About, so before we went to London to compete, we went to a national team training camp in Texas and we trained there for about 10 days before we left. Um, And while I was there, I started having some pain in my leg and um, I didn't know it was a stress fracture at the time, but it just got a little bit worse and a little bit worse every single day to the point where I was in so much pain in practice. And um, you know, it was, if it was any other year or any other competition, I probably would have not competed and and rested. Um, I had my, uh, I had a a big lump on my leg. It was obviously a stress fracture and, um, but it was the Olympics. And I, I I was like, you know what, this is my once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm going to push through. And it was really hard to do practice because I was in so much pain. But to be honest with you, when I raised my hand to compete my routines, um, I think all the pain just went numb and I didn't feel anything because that adrenaline was kind of rushing through. So uh, as soon as the Olympics were over, I got a boot on my leg and let it heal for about six weeks. 17 with the stress fracture and gold medalist. That's crazy. (laughs) That's crazy. That's its own accomplishment. Um, (laughs) So after that, a lot of people, I don't think realize like how college gymnastics and elite gymnastics I don't think people understood that like then they couldn't really go hand in hand because of money opportunities and stuff like that so whenever you went to UCLA you didn't compete at UCLA you coach pretty much right right yeah so before NIL became a thing um it was you either 
you stay amateur and you don't take any prize money or endorsements or sponsors and you can compete in college gymnastics or you can go professional and you can do the, all those sponsors and endorsements, um, but you give up your eligibility in college. And so the year before the Olympics, I went to the world championships in Tokyo and I won the all around. So I was world champion and um, that was pretty awesome. But as soon as I got home, I was getting calls from all these agents saying, hey, we want to represent you. We think you could make all this money and, you know, we have some really great opportunities for you. And so at 15, 16 years old, I had to sit there and decide whether I was going to go pro or go do college gymnastics. And I had, I had dreamed about being a college gymnast almost just as much as I dreamed about going to the Olympics. I wanted both. I wanted to be an Olympian. I wanted to be a college gymnast, um, which explains why I'm here now. But anyway, um, I ended up going professional. I ended up, you know, taking the money and, um, getting some really, really awesome opportunities, um, when I went professional and my, my only reason I I made that decision was because I called, I wanted to go to UCLA. I called the head coach there and said, Hey, if I can't compete, can I still be a part of the team in some way? And she was like, absolutely. You can come, you can be a team manager. And I was like, awesome. I had no idea what team managers did. I just said, (laughs) yes, I just wanted to be a part of a college team because I loved that team aspect. And I just, I wanted to go and be a part of it. And that was Coach Val, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Did she like really get you into the coaching world and kind of, kind of lead the way for you? She did. Yeah. I mean, funny part was I showed up on the first day of school and I was like, okay, what do team managers do? And she said, all right, team managers, move the mats, chalk the bars, do the laundry, you know, do all the stuff that nobody wants to do. (laughs) Um, I was like, all right. And I didn't even think twice. I said, you know what? I'm a member of this team. Like, this is my role. I'm going to do it the best that I can. And a lot of people um, like laughed and some people criticized, like, why do you have an Olympic gold medalist who's moving the mats for the girls? (laughs) Um, But to be honest with you, I did not care. I said, you know what? This is this is what I need to do to contribute to the team. This is my job. I'm going to do it the very best that I can. So I was a team manager for three years, my freshman, sophomore, and junior year. And then my senior year, uh, she gave me a coaching role. So I became the volunteer assistant coach my senior year. And I continued to do that for three years. So um, that's what I was doing before I came to Arkansas. Okay. Backtracking really quick back on the like college and elite thing. Do you think that it's like changed the sport any now that like, competitors like SUNY Lee at Auburn, like that they can do both now. Yeah. I think it's it's changed a lot. I think, um, you know, it's, it's only good for a sport like gymnastics, because when you think about how our sport works, it's very different than basketball or football, where you start peaking usually after college, you know, you, you can do your four years, use your eligibility, then go professional and have your professional career. In most sports, you can do that. In gymnastics, the lifespan is much shorter. So that's why you see Olympians that are 16, 17, 18 years old. It's usually before they go to college. So there wasn't really an opportunity for for gymnasts to go to college, compete for four years, and then go do elite. I mean, there were people that did it. It wasn't common because it's very difficult. So now I I think it's amazing that gymnasts can do both. You know, you see people like Jordan Childs and Mm -hmm. Suni Lee who now can not only make money, um, they can have those sponsors and endorsements, but they can compete both in college and in, in the elite scene. It's not easy. I'm sure it's really hard for them, <laughs> but you can do it. And I think it's awesome. I wish I had gotten the opportunity to have the best of both worlds like they do. And I'm very excited for them. Yeah. That's interesting. So NIL makes the most sense for gymnastics. And I think so. My mind. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So after UCLA, what? How did you how did you get to Arkansas? You were a hundred yard tech's first hire. How really how did that happen? <laughs> well, yeah. okay, so the former gymnastics sport administrator, um, her name was Chris Pohl. She was here, um, and she knew Miss Val really well. And so um Mark Cook, the former head coach, had announced that he was gonna be retiring at the end of the season. And while I was coaching at UCLA, and um uh Basically, I got a text from him one day and he said, hey, Jordan, it's Hunter Yurchek and, you know, our head coach is going to be retiring and we'd love to talk to you about your interest in the head coaching position. Um, But essentially what had happened is Hunter had called Miss Val and said, hey, do you know of any, you know, great 
head coaching candidates. And um, she said, oh, I have just the person. <laughs> and so she kind of put in a good word for me. Um, and from there, I did a, you know, I came out for an interview. We actually competed UCLA versus Oklahoma that season. Mm -hmm. And I drove from Norman to Fayetteville and had my first meeting with Hunter, my first interview, basically. Um, and we sat at Onyx Coffee. And it was supposed to be, I think, I think he had oh, wow. a lot in like an hour for the conversation. And I think we sat there for like two, three hours, just chatting and talking. And he, he'll tell you now that as soon as he left that first coffee, he said to whoever was with him, like, that's our next head coach. And so, um, it was just, it was awesome. It was obviously I came out and did a full, you know, interview process and talked to pretty much everyone on campus, but um yeah, the, the head coach position position was opening and I had my little moment of, you know what, I'm I'm just a volunteer coach. Am I ready to be a head coach? Right. <laughs> you know, maybe yeah. an assistant for a while. Um, but I spent those three years with Miss Val while I was volunteering, just absorbing everything, uh, learning everything. I took copious notes. Um, I learned a lot about how to be a great leader, not just a coach, but a leader. And, wow. um, and, and when I found out that the position was opening and I was going to be interviewing, um, I, I said, okay, what do I need to know about? I need to know how to budget for a program. I need to know how to raise money. I need to know how to do X, Y, and Z and all of these things. And I just asked so many questions and, um, one of the, and how I, old were you for this? I was, um, 23, 23. <laughs> yeah. yep. So I, I always say like, I, I told them in my interview, you know, I don't know how to do every single thing, yeah. but I know how to work hard and I know I can figure pretty much anything out. And yeah. I think that's a really good piece of advice for anyone who's going into a job interview that maybe they don't feel fully qualified for, you know, what matters is how hard you're willing to work and your attitude and your, your ability to be confident. In person. Now, have you ever been to Arkansas prior? Um, I mm -hmm. had, yeah, I'd been here because UCLA had competed against Arkansas a couple of times. Um, okay. Yeah, but I didn't, I mean, when we compete, we go, we see the hotel, we see the arena, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> right. You yeah. didn't, you didn't know Fable or Arkansas. I didn't know. And, um, you know, I think just like most people who have never been to Arkansas, I had my, my ideas of what it was like. And, and I flew in for that interview. And, you know, I was honestly just so surprised by how nice the area was and just the facilities and how just that sense of community, you can feel it when you're in here in Fayetteville. And um, I don't know, that's exactly I what I caught I the fable now. bug. I call it the fable bug. So I guess you caught the fable bug. Yeah, I did. <laughs> a, lot have. a lot of people have. Yeah. Yeah, it's different it's, for sure. It's unique. It's, it's, it's a special place. That's for what sure. was the, like, I guess everything changed from moving from LA to a place like Fayetteville? Yeah. Well, I'm originally, I grew up in Michigan. So, um, you know, okay. I would say that for me, Fayetteville feels like half Southern, half Midwestern. Mm -hmm. And so to be honest with you, like it was really refreshing moving from LA because I had, you know, lived in that big city for about seven years and it was great for that time in my life, but I was ready to have a house in a yard with, with a dog and just kind of settle in and, um, feel like it was a little bit more small town and, I really, I really loved it. I saw myself living here and um, I don't know. I just loved the fact that it's all about Razorbacks here. Like everybody yeah. in the whole state is supporting Ra Razorbacks. Whole and state, yeah. That is not the same in a place like LA or even, you know, any big city we've got, you know, the Clippers and the Lakers and the Kings and UCLA and USC. And there's just so much. Um, yeah. you, here, it's Razorbacks. And I love that. Yeah. Everything. And you've brought with you a fantastic coaching staff um, with your fiance, Chris and Kyla Ross. What, how did you figure out and decide like how to put those pieces together? Yeah. Well, I, I knew Chris would be coming with me. He was at the time um, coaching the men's team at university of Oklahoma. And before that he was coaching the women's team at Nebraska um, so, you know, Chris is, in my opinion, the best male assistant coach in the country. I mean, he's got, he's got all of the qualities that you need and it's, it's hard to find quality male coaches for a women's sport. Mm -hmm. Um, but Chris, he does it so well. He is fun guy energy and which is kind of the opposite of me. I'm more intense in the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a little more serious. He's like the opposite. He's fun and energized and always 
you know, making up nicknames for girls and just keeping it light and fun, but he has a great technical eye. So he did gymnastics. He was an Olympian as well. He did gymnastics for Mm -hmm. 30 years. Um, so he has a wealth of knowledge about gymnastics technique and drills and in all the different skills. So that comes in handy, obviously. Um, and then Kyla, who was my teammate in the Olympics. Um, and then when I went to UCLA, I coached her for three years. So we've kind of been in every phase of phase of life <laughs> together. And yeah. now she works with me. Um, but just she is one of one of the best human beings in the entire world. She is. Um, not only a great human, but she's a really great coach. She's very intentional. She's very positive. She is never in a bad mood, which is great. (laughs) I don't have to worry about her being really emotional and, um, being in a bad mood. So, um, Kyla's great. And obviously she's has the success to back up what she's saying. She is, she was the first athlete to ever win an Olympic gold, a world championship gold and an NCAA championship, the trifecta. So I didn't know that. Okay. Got that trifecta. And she's so. a Razorback now. She is, yep. <laughs> and Very I good. did some rating. We've improved on vault and beam a lot since her arrival. Is that is is it is beam kind of her specialty? I specialty, guess or vault, yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the two. Yeah, I mean, right now, so Kyla's mainly coaching beam. She coaches bars a little bit, um, but I think vault and beam last year we set program score records. Um, which is great. I mean, that's the direction we should be going and we should be continuing to get better and improve not just those records, but consistently be in those score ranges. So um, I think that's not just a credit to um, the, the team and their hard work, but also the coaching staff. And we've worked really hard to elevate the quality of the gymnastics over these last four years. Yeah. What's your favorite event to coach? Do you floor. have a favorite floor? Okay. Floor, floor, floor. is what I coach at UCLA. And um, I love it. It's like putting a puzzle together because it's everyone's favorite to watch, which makes it fun to coach too. Um, you know, you've got choreography, it's fun, got yeah. tumbling, leaps. Um, it takes a lot of buildup and training to get the endurance to do a floor routine. I love that challenge. So it's kind of like putting pieces of a puzzle together. Um, and I love that challenge. Yeah. It's those last year we had some really fun girls to watch. Mm-hmm. No, just wait for this year. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> so and last year also was your the first ever meet in Bud Walton. Mm-hmm. How was that for y'all? That was incredible. That was that was something I wanted to do since I got here. Um mm-hmm. just I'm always thinking big <laughs> and um oh, well, you know, when we go when we go to these other SEC schools, the top schools are competing in their basketball arena. There are a few schools that are like us where you have a volleyball gymnastics arena as well. It doesn't seat as many fans. I knew though, when I got here, I was going to have to build the fan base. I was going to have to get more people packed into Barnhill in order to prove that, Hey, we, we could go to Bud Walton and we could fill that place. And so, um, you know, we've worked hard on the marketing and the promotions and building that fan base. We've gotten a lot of people excited about gymnastics and um the first meet last year was kind of a, a test to see you know who how many people would show up and we got ten thousand fans which is pretty much the lower bowl of, of bud walton yeah. right it was awesome so this year we're gonna do so, two bud walton two mm-hmm. oh we know about florida mm-hmm. the there's other? another one yep minnesota Oh, Minnesota. Okay. okay, I didn't know if it was a secret or something, but okay. So Florida <laughs> and Minnesota. Tell everybody you know. <laughs> Get the word out. We got you. What's the fan atmosphere been like for you in Arkansas? Oh, it's been a blast. Um, that was something that I kind of had an eye for uh, when I came from UCLA because the head coach there um, was really creative and really intentional about the marketing and and just making it and it not just a meet, but a fan experience. And that's something we really work hard on. So even where I just came from before I did this interview was we our rehearsal of our introductions of our team, which are next level this year. Um, they're so fun all the way from the video that plays so before, to the, the announcements, the lighting, the, it's just everything about it is so fun. Um, another thing we did my first year was I rearranged where the equipment is in the arena before the floor was right in the center i actually moved it around so the floor is right next to the student section okay and it was very intentional because 
I wanted the students to feel like they can stand up, dance, clap, be involved in the routines with the athletes, mm -hmm. which is really unique. Um, but, but it's fun for the girls. We literally coach them up to say, hey, on this part, you're going to look right at the students and play along with them. And then Corey, our hype guy, is going to teach the students, hey, on this part, you're going to go like this with her. <laughs> And there's that kind of engagement moment between the students and the athletes. Um, it's so fun. And I've had a blast kind of figuring out how we can make it not, not just fun for kids, because it's always fun for kids, obviously, they love gymnastics, but right. it's fun for adults. It's fun for college students, too. Yeah. And now, where'd you come up with that idea? I mean, I learned a lot of it from Miss Val at UCLA, um, but it's obvious, obviously been how do we take something that I've learned and make it Arkansas and make it unique to our program here? Um, and we spend a lot of time thinking about it and working really hard on it. Oh, well, it's yeah. working. Thank so. you. And it's gotten, yeah. I've noticed the last at least three years, it's gotten so much like bigger and more fan engagement every single year. And it's so much fun to watch. Yeah. And that's all across the SEC too, I would say. How how would you describe the SEC as a whole right now in the competition? Yeah, I would say as far as conferences go, um, competitively, the SEC is the strongest as a collective. Okay. I would also say that, um, you know, collectively, we bring the biggest crowds. Um, obviously, you know, programs like Utah, who they have 15,000 fans every single meet, they do a great job. Um, but as a whole, the SEC is very strong and very gymnastics is very popular. And it kind of all started with Friday night heights on TV. Every Friday night, you can, you can watch three gymnastics meets back to back to back. Um, that has, our sport has grown in popularity tremendously. Um, now our national championship is on ABC, which is awesome. Wow, so, yeah. so gymnastics is really big in the SEC. It's really competitive, um, which is one of the things that drew me to this position was I love I love competition. I'm I'm one of the most competitive people you'll ever meet. Um, but I love that. It makes it a challenge every single weekend. We don't have weekends where we say, oh, this is an easy win for us. It's never like that. Um, but I prefer that. Right. We've got a really um, tough one this weekend with Alabama. What have you been looking forward to in that meet? And should we expect like more consistent lineups or a bit of a rotation considering so much depth on this team? Yeah, good question. Um, I would say as far as, you know, we're really excited to have Alabama here. They're a great program, great team. Um, and, but the messaging to the team, no matter who we're competing against, is it, it, this is why it's different than other sports, is we don't have to study what Alabama does to do our thing. We don't play offense or defense. Right. So, um, so the message to the team is always, you know, we know what we need to do. We go in there, do our job, regardless of who's on the other event in whatever color leotard. And so that's going to be the goal for the team is not to focus on who we're competing against, but to go in and be the best version of our team that we can be on that day. And if we do that, that gives us a better chance at winning the meet. Right. Um, so yeah. really excited about that. And then as far as lineups go, um, we do have a lot of newcomers who we're going to be kind of shifting in and out of the lineups in the first half of the season to try to figure out who are our best six on every event by the postseason. So you might see some shifting in the lineups um, here and there, which is a good thing. We do have that depth this year on multiple events. So lineups will, will start to get consistent towards the end of the year. But for right now, we're going to be shifting things around, figuring out what is the best plan for the postseason. Yeah. Do you think there will be any all around competitors this week? Yeah. So Nora Flatley will, will be in the all around tomorrow. That's the plan. Um, she's really excited. She, she was ready to go in the all around last weekend, but we're really intentionally pacing her because like I just said, the goal is for her to be at peak shape in the postseason, mm -hmm. not right now. So we're going to put her in the all around tomorrow and give her that opportunity. And we're going to put up our best people. So, um, you'll definitely see Nora in the all around tomorrow. Yeah. And she's the UCLA transfer. She's awesome. Um, how has her transfer been? Oh, it's been nothing but amazing. I mean, I, so my last year coaching at UCLA was her freshman year. So, so I had coached her a little bit and known her from that year. Um, and then she, you know, as I went to Arkansas, she had a great career at UCLA, a 12 time all American, um, just such a fierce competitor. Um, and when she went in the transfer portal, I reached out and brought her on an official visit. Um, we had a lot of just heart to hearts about, you know, me listening to kind of where she was mentally, physically, emotionally, and then what she wanted for her last year of gymnastics. And it turned out that, that, that what we have here at Arkansas felt like 
a good fit for her. Um, she's been nothing but amazing. She's like I said, she's a fierce competitor, but she's also just an incredible human. She's hardworking. She's so intentional. Um, she wants to be the best leader that she can be. So she's been an awesome um, example and vocal leader for our whole team. So I have nothing but amazing things to say about her. Nice. I'm That's excited. Awesome. I'm so excited to, yeah. to get into the season more and yeah. watch SEC. Me. Be excited about tomorrow too. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys gonna come? I'm not. I'm in Little Rock right now, but I'm hoping to be up for the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same here. I'm out of town right now, but hoping to get there for sure. Okay. I won't hold it against you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll be we'll be at some masters this year. I promise. Oh yeah. No, okay. That's the promise. All right. I'll be. Um, last couple <laughs> random things. What is your favorite like Fayetteville activity? Ooh, good question. Ooh, good question. Mm-hmm. I. I, we, we got a dog when we moved here. Um, we rescued her like right when COVID hits because we thought, well, okay. <laughs> uh, she's a rescue, but she's uh we found out she's Rottweiler Pitbull mix. So okay. Ooh, what a mix. she's very big. She's very, <laughs> looks very scary, but she's very sweet. She loves people. Uh, so my favorite That's thing awesome. is to take her on the Razorback Greenway and walk. And we go like from where Mamaka is and we walk her all the way up to where Dixon Street is and then up through campus mm-hmm. and then back um just like so so beautiful but she loves it too and we love walking walking our dog yeah what's your favorite restaurant in Fayetteville um oh there's lots it's hard to choose um I really like feed and folly um yeah. Atlas is kind of one of my recent favorites it's kind of like a nicer restaurant um what is I it love- called Atlas Atlas yeah okay um let's see what else i like um cheers cheers is good too i don't know i like i'm not really picky with food so i like a lot of things we've got some good stuff there and then i got one what's your game day routine like like before they match what 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 does that look like me personally or like the whole team you personally me personally um okay so we always do so our meets are always Friday nights. Um pretty right. late. So we actually come to campus and with the whole team, we do what we call a walkthrough. So we go into the arena. The girls will stretch and kind of move around, kind of get warmed up. Um, they'll do they'll visualize it, all their routines, which is a huge thing that we do in gymnastics. Um, so we go in for the walkthrough for about an hour. And then from there, I, you know, to be honest, on meet day, I try to just relax and chill for the most part, yeah. because um, I don't want to get too worked up and excited because our meets are so late in the day. Mm-hmm. So I try to just relax. Sometimes I'll, I'll get some work done. I'm usually doing media and interviews and things like that. We always have a coaches meeting. Um, so we meet with the, all the other coaches and we talk about the lineups and kind of finalize any, any decisions we need to make. Do y'all do that on game day? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I yeah. That. I mean, for the most part, we, you know, we work through who we think is going to compete during the week. We observe their training and figure out right. um, who's going to be our, our six on every event. And then we kind of finalize everything the morning of the meet. Um, and we tell the team who, what the lineup is before the warm up starts. So, um, gotcha. yeah, you know, nothing really exciting there. Just, you know, kind of getting focused and I always pick out my outfit, my meet day outfit. Um, <laughs> And then get ready and go to the meet. Yeah. There we go. Coffee. That's another one. Oh, yeah. Much needed. <laughs> Gotta have it. I think Cindy, do you have anything else? Have... No, I'm, I'm good. Jordan, thank you so much. This is this is awesome. Of course. Thank you guys for having and me on. What time is the meet tomorrow? 7.15. 7.15. I'm telling you, 7.15. Even though it's the, the first vault will happen at 7.30, come at 7.15. Because you want to see the video and the whole introduction and the whole excitement get gets going around seven fifteen. Whole production. We're gonna clip that and send that out. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> really yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. All right. Have a good one.